Now for another technological masterclass as we take a close look at the development of human-level AI for robotics. To tell us just how close we are, I'm delighted to be joined by Professor David Vernon and Dr. Shingo Shimoda. Gentlemen, welcome. Pleasure. So we're talking about uh, AI in uh, robotics. So how close are we to having a, a human-level intelligence? Um, not as close as we'd like to be, uh, to be honest with you. We, we know what we want to achieve. Um, and we can achieve a great deal in robotics today, but achieving the versatility that a human being has in their ability to deal with uncertainty and the unknown around them is, is something uh, still of a, a reasonably far goal in, in AI. So, so how important is it that we work towards that goal? Uh, the, one of the important purpose of uh, robot researchers is want to be a friend with robots, also sharing many tasks and uh, helping each other. For that, AI, AI is very uh, simple word, but uh, cognition of the task or sharing and uh, such kind of one is much more important. So a kind, not a simple AI, but much more complicated with the interaction or sharing tasks or such kind of one. Tell us a little bit about the work that uh, is happening here at EROS. So we're organizing a cutting edge forum. Effectively, to answer your first question, your first question, where are we today in terms of um, achieving this goal that we've had for the last 63 years of achieving human level um, intelligence in, in robotics. Um, and we're going to be looking at some of the state of the art that's been done in, in Europe um, and around the world. And we can do things which are we couldn't do 10 years ago. Right. Um, and we, we've moved robotics out of the factory into the home. Um, and, and that's where we are today. So, so some of the things that we will we'll be talking about show robots working in a kitchen, for example, just doing menial things that humans find easy, but, but are not necessarily easy for a robot to do. What was very difficult five years ago that you can do now? Two things have happened. Uh, one is our computer vision facilities, our capabilities have improved greatly. Our, our vision is much better than it was 10 years ago or even five years ago. Um, the second thing is we've We've learned how to bring a lot of common sense knowledge in and factor that into the reasoning and the way that the robots go about it. So now um, you don't have to program everything in. The robots can learn for themselves right. um, as they experience the world and as they go about doing things in the world. Yeah, you brought these great examples with you, so maybe you could take us through them. Yeah. Sure. This is um, an example from the work of Michael Bates in the Institute of AI in the University of Bremen. Uh, it's a nice example because it, it, it shows difficult robotics tasks uh, being done by a, a, um, a PR2 robot. It seems simple to you and me, right? right. right? But, but the problem is that, that it doesn't necessarily know what these things look like. It certainly doesn't know where they are and it has to figure these things out. So right. it has to be able to reason about the world around it. It also has to be able to anticipate what will happen when it does something. Right. When you and I work in the world, everything that we do, we, we, well, what would happen if I did that? Right. And that's not been the way we've thought about robotics today, but that's the, the key to cognitive robotics is continually anticipate the outcome of the actions and the need to act. Um, and that's, that's what this work shows you can do now. Okay. So what does the future look like? Where do we go from here? This kind of robots can help us, but uh, the, we to share, so live together, much more we need the interaction also, not only just sharing a task, but interaction, uh, helping each other. This kind of mechanical interaction and this kind of task sharing. Complete the one task together. I think that we're going to see robotics become more part of our lives. Um, and as you said, they're going to be, become a seamless part of what we do. But we need more research. Right. And the research has to be not just at the applied level, it has to be at the fundamental level as well. But, but I'm incredibly optimistic about the future. I'm looking forward to working in it for a lot longer. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank really appreciate it. Thank you very, thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.